new NHL teams are coming. That's no secret. Expansion is inevitable. There's money to be made, and the success of recent expansion teams in the Vegas Golden Knights and Seattle Kraken proves this. If it's not expansion, it could be the relocation of a struggling franchise like the Arizona Coyotes, who can't seem to secure an arena deal. In recent months, we've even seen groups formally request expansion in both Salt Lake City and Atlanta. The former was even acknowledged by the National Hockey League. Regardless of where, it won't be long until we see new NHL franchises in new markets. But which cities could land the 33rd or even 34th NHL franchise? Let's take a look at some of the contenders. Salt Lake City, Utah. Let's start with the one that seems most likely at this point. On January 24th, Ryan Smith, chairman of Smith Entertainment Group and governor of the NBA's Utah Jazz, formally requested the NHL to initiate the expansion process. The SEG group has been in discussions with NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman since 2022. The group said it can welcome an NHL franchise to Salt Lake City as soon as next season, using Delta Center, the home of the Jazz, as an interim home arena. Delta Center has already hosted five NHL preseason games, and shortly after SEG Group went public with their request, the NHL announced the Los Angeles Kings will face the Vegas Golden Knights in the annual Frozen Fury preseason game at the Delta Center in September. In the long term, Salt Lake City has a bid underway to host the 2034 Winter Olympics. As part of this bid, the city would be constructing a new arena designed for both professional and Olympic hockey. On top of the NBA's Utah Jazz, Ryan Smith's group also owns Real Salt Lake of Major League Soccer and the Utah Royals of the National Women's Soccer League. Salt Lake City is already home of the Utah Grizzlies, the ECHL affiliate of the Colorado Avalanche. The team's attendance has also been soaring as of late, with five games of over 8,500 fans since January. They've been top 10 attendance-wise in the league this year. The Jazz are also among the upper half of the NBA in terms of attendance, with an average this season of 18,206. That's even better when you take into consideration that the team hasn't been performing well as they progress through a rebuild. The Salt Lake City metropolitan area has a population of over 1.2 million and is far enough from other NHL cities, but still close enough for rivalries to form. Just look at the Denver Nuggets and Utah Jazz in the NBA. Salt Lake City clearly has an upper hand on the other cities we're about to tackle, with a viable arena plan, an ownership group deeply committed to the community, a market that hasn't been tapped by most professional sports leagues, and a hockey history that spans back to 1969 with the Salt Lake Golden Eagles of the Western Hockey League. Houston, Texas This is another city that's been making recent headlines when it comes to NHL expansion. In an interview with Bloomberg on February 21st, Tillman Fertitta, the owner of the NBA's Houston Rockets, revealed he's had discussions with NHL Brass on potentially adding a second team to Texas, whether that's via expansion or relocation. Apparently, the billionaire has been looking into acquiring a franchise since he purchased the Rockets seven years ago. The history of hockey in Houston includes two professional teams that were both named the Houston Arrows. The initial iteration operated in the World Hockey Association from 1972 to 1978, and the second team played in the International League and AHL from 1994 to 2013. Setting up shop in Houston would be a low-risk, high-reward move for the NHL. The Houston metropolitan area boasts a population of 7.1 million. That's the fifth largest in all of the United States, behind only New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, and Dallas. In addition to the Rockets in the NBA, Houston is also home to each of the other major sports leagues with the Houston Texans, Astros, and Dynamo FC. A potential Houston Arrows NHL franchise would also have an immediate rivalry with the Dallas Stars. Atlanta, Georgia The NHL has that one X that it can't stop going back to, and its name is Atlanta. On March 12th, a new entrant for NHL expansion emerged, with interest in bringing the NHL back to Georgia. The Alpharetta Sports and Entertainment Group is led by Anson Carter, a once right-winger who recorded 421 points in 674 NHL games. The ASE Group is just the latest of a few parties interested in bringing an NHL team back to Atlanta. 
the city was previously home to the Atlanta Flames from 1972 to 1980, who relocated to Calgary, and the Atlanta Thrashers from 1999 to 2011, who moved and became the Winnipeg Jets, both of which failed largely in part to horrible ownership groups. It makes sense that the NHL would consider a return to the city, given that the Atlanta metropolitan area recently became the sixth largest in the United States, with a population of 6.3 million. That's more than metro areas like Washington and Philadelphia, both of which are of course home to NHL teams. Of the big five sports leagues, the NHL is the only one without an Atlanta team. There's the Atlanta Braves of the MLB, Atlanta Hawks of the NBA, Atlanta Falcons of the NFL, and Atlanta United FC of MLS. Another factor working in Atlanta's favor is the city is home to Turner Network Television, or TNT, one of the major broadcasters of the NHL in the U.S. Atlanta's Major League Soccer team joined the league only in 2017 and is already the fourth most valuable team in the league. Best believe the NHL wants their piece of the pie. Quebec City You can't talk about NHL expansion without bringing up a return for the Quebec Nordiques. Ever since the team relocated and became the Colorado Avalanche in 1995, Canadian fans have been clamoring for a return. It hurts even more knowing that the Avalanche won the Stanley Cup the very next year in 1996. Despite this, nearly 30 years later, the Nordiques logo remains an emblem of pride for Quebec. And many of the province's hockey fans lust for the rivalry of the Quebec Nordiques and Montreal Canadiens to be reignited. But the deck is certainly stacked against this market, despite its hockey-mad fanbase and the 18,200-plus seat arena, the Videotron Center, which opened in 2015. Quebec City's metropolitan area population is only slightly above 800,000. That's significantly lower than Salt Lake City or Atlanta, and isn't even comparable to the over 4 million for Montreal. Despite this, Quebec City did have an expansion bid in, but it was deferred and awarded to the Vegas Golden Knights in 2016. Unfortunately to the NHL and Gary Bettman, neither the Canadian dollar nor the Quebec market has strengthened since the 1990s, making a Nordique's NHL return unlikely. Another Toronto team a far more likely scenario for Canada getting its 8th NHL franchise would be for a second team to set up in the Greater Toronto Area, whether that be in the city itself or perhaps in Hamilton. It's a concept that's been suggested before. After all, hockey is Canada's game and Toronto is its biggest city. Toronto Maple Leafs fans are among the most passionate in the league and their building is constantly sold out. This would be the easiest way for the NHL to make money fast. In fact, the Leafs are the second most valuable franchise in the NHL at $1.45 billion behind only the New York Rangers at $1.55 billion. If markets like New York and Los Angeles can support multiple NHL teams, Toronto certainly can. Even if this team was a little brother to the Leafs, like the New York Mets to the New York Yankees, it would be hard for them not to fill their barn for every home game. And perhaps, unlike the Leafs, they'd be able to win a Stanley Cup. Sorry Leafs fans, I had to. If the NHL wanted to take the Hamilton route and revive the Hamilton Tigers that were in the league from 1920 to 25, the first Ontario Centre is currently undergoing renovations and has a capacity of 19,000. That's more than many current NHL arenas. Oklahoma City We've gone in depth with the five most likely options we see for NHL expansion, but let's go over some of the other markets that have been floated, beginning with OKC. That's right, Houston isn't the only southern city looking for a franchise. While it's not an established market, Oklahoma City's aviation-based economy offers two guaranteed things, money and fans. Its metropolitan area has a population of 1.4 million, and another 1 million people are less than a two-hour drive away in the Tulsa, Oklahoma metro area. However, the lack of a hockey market doesn't exactly have investors lining up at the door to support a team. Not only that, but Oklahoma City hasn't hosted minor league hockey since 2015 and faced attendance issues with the AHL's Oklahoma City Barons. Similar to the case of the Vegas Golden Knights, NHL fandom will have to be intentionally cultivated to support a team in Oklahoma City, which takes longer to plan. Like with Vegas, however, the NHL has the chance to be just the second professional team in the city 
joining the NBA's Oklahoma City Thunder, with whom an NHL team could likely share an arena with in the Paycom Center. It's also worth mentioning that Tulsa, Oklahoma's ECHL team, the Oilers, recently recorded the third-highest single-game attendance in the 36-year history of the ECHL, the team now holding five of the nine largest crowds in league history. Kansas City, Missouri With a metro population of over 2.3 million, Kansas City is a strong sports market. The city is already home to the Kansas City Chiefs of the NFL, the Kansas City Royals of the MLB, and Sporting Kansas City of the MLS. Chiefs fans are known to be particularly passionate, though three Super Bowl wins in five years will certainly help with that. Kansas City is also the home of the Mavericks of the ECHL, who are affiliated with the NHL's Seattle Kraken and AHL's Coachella Valley Thunderbirds. There's also already a centrally located NHL size arena, the T-Mobile Center. A Kansas City expansion team would already have an in-state rival in the St. Louis Blues, plus relatively close adversaries in the Colorado Avalanche and Dallas Stars. Cincinnati, Ohio Along with Kansas City, Cincinnati was directly mentioned at this year's All-Star Game by NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman and Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly as having expressed interest in an NHL franchise. Over the last few years, Cincinnati has also been evaluating their arena situation. Heritage Bank Arena is aging, and there's talk of a new building being constructed. Cincinnati is currently home to the ECHL's Cyclones, affiliated with the NHL's New York Rangers, and AHL's Hartford Wolfpack. The Cincinnati Cyclones recently recorded their second-largest crowd in team history, with 14,258 fans in attendance on January 6th. The main argument against a Cincinnati NHL team would be the fact that the Columbus Blue Jackets aren't too far away. Columbus is a larger city and doesn't exactly rank near the top of the league when it comes to attendance. Portland, Oregon Portland, Oregon is the second most populous city in the Pacific Northwest United States, behind only Seattle. It boasts a metropolitan area population of 2.1 million. The city is home to an NBA team in the Trailblazers and an MLS team in the Timbers. The city has also long been rumored to land an expansion team in Major League Baseball, Perhaps the NHL will follow suit. However, the league may hesitate to put a team so close to their newest one, the Seattle Kraken. Portland already hosts the Western Hockey League's Winter Hawks, who just won the 2024 U.S. Division title and are known to have a passionate fan base. Milwaukee, Wisconsin Milwaukee is one of the biggest cities in the Great Lakes region of the U.S., with a metro area population of 1.5 million. The city is already home to the NBA's Milwaukee Bucks and the MLB's Milwaukee Brewers. The NFL's Packers are also close in Green Bay. Milwaukee is one of the smaller markets in professional sports and, as a result, would fail to bring in the same revenue as some of the larger cities we've already mentioned. In addition, the Chicago Blackhawks are extremely close by. Milwaukee is likely to remain an AHL city, with the Admirals the affiliate of the Nashville Predators, a fact that the Admirals don't seem to be upset about. Hartford, Connecticut This one, we'll admit, surprised us when making this video, but apparently the governor of Connecticut, Ned Lamont, is trying to bring a return of the Hartford Whalers into existence. He's gone as far as saying that he has a group in place to purchase the Arizona Coyotes and move them to the XL Center, the current home of the AHL's Hartford Wolfpack and the University of Connecticut Huskies men's and women's basketball teams. Hartford boasts a metro population of 1.2 million, but the NHL may be hesitant to head there versus other markets, given the Whalers already folded once and became the Carolina Hurricanes. Halifax, Nova Scotia This one is pretty unlikely, but it's oh so fun to talk about. The Halifax metro population is less than 500,000, but It's a city with great hockey tradition and has developed some of the NHL's best players, including Sidney Crosby, Nathan McKinnon, and Brad Marchand. But it's still a small market, with relatively little room for growth. It also doesn't have an NHL-sized arena, the biggest being the 12,000-seat Scotiabank Center, home of the QMJHL's Halifax Mooseheads. Travel to Halifax would also be an issue for teams, with the closest team being the Bruins, who still require flight travel to play in the city. While the atmosphere was incredible in Halifax last Christmas, 
as the NHL's next sensation in Connor Bedard absolutely lit it up in the World Juniors in front of a raucous crowd. But if Quebec City is a long shot, Halifax is probably a pipe dream. But which city would you like to land the 33rd NHL franchise? What team names do you think would fit the mentioned cities? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to click like if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe for more NHL content. We'll see you in the next video.